So there's some big changes going on in the Unity game engine right now. And it's going to be a net negative for developers. And I think Unity is going to eat it on this one. Unity to charge developers a fee each time a game is installed next year. Not bought, not just downloaded, actually installed. So I'm going to be going into this article and explaining how bad Unity is about to get. But before I do, guys, make sure you drop me a like, make sure you're subscribed, and make sure you share this video out. And if you know somebody working on a game that might be using Unity or is using Unity, this is going to be extremely important to them. So let's get into this one. Unity has announced plans to charge developers a fee each time a video game using the Unity engine is installed. Unity Plus is also being retired for new subscribers starting today. In a blog post released today, Unity revealed the Unity runtime fee. This new model to be implemented on January 2024 and essentially means that game developers will be charged a fee per install. Once a project crosses the $200,000 in revenue over 12 months and achieve 200,000 total installs for Unity and Plus. For Pro and Enterprise, the threshold is increased to 1 million. Okay, we're just going to skip all that. The fee is on average around 20 cents per download. The fee also varies depending on what development tool you're using and how many installs over the threshold the project has reached. I'm going to skip over the table for now because I'm actually going to go to their website to go over it. Fees also depend on what project is monetizing. Free-to-play game developers will be able to offset this fee if they decide to use another Unity service that isn't a developer tool or editor. Notice I say they didn't say exempt. They said offset. This new model is also being applied retroactively across games that are already on the market and have been developed using Unity. So if you had a game previously that's been out for two or three years, you're about to owe a shit ton of money. How games developed for Switch or downloaded via Game Pass affect the figures is currently unclear. This news has been met with a widespread concern from game developers. Many are worried about the viability of charity bundles, which Robot Teddy founder Callum Underwood pointed out on Twitter, sales prices and demos. Right, so if you do like Humble Bundle and three of the games are Unity and you get them, you can get games dirt cheap with Humble Bundle. You can almost get the game for free and actually cost the developer money. Brandon Sheffield, director of Necrosoft Games, a studio behind the up-and-coming Persona-inspired RPG Demon School, and one of the voices on the Insert Credit podcast has discouraged people from using Unity and it is concerned about users who may well abuse the system by constantly uninstalling and reinstalling games. Yes, like I said, it's based on install. It's not on download, it's not on purchase. It's per install. Every time Unity boots up a new install, there's a charge. In a blog post on the Insert Credit website, Sheffield has summarized many of the issues indie game developers could face with this new system. Criticizing Unity and pointing out the recent comments from Current CEO John Ritillo, I don't fuck it, has made around the game developers and monetization. We'd hope there will be protection against instances like this, but it's currently not clear. And it's not clear for a reason. Like they don't just mock this up in 30 seconds and say, oh, this sounds good, we'll deal with it. Gary Newman from Face Punch, best known for working on the survival game Rust, has taken to Twitter to express distaste for the potential for Unity can just start charging us a tax per install. Yes. It's in that end user license agreements. When you press accept, they can up, they literally say we can change these at any time. You gave them permission to do this. And the developers have to trust Unity's tracking. Yes. It's safe to say there are lots of unanswered questions and worried developers out there following this news. Absolutely. Some games you can play on Switch that were created in the Unity engine are Return to Oberdin, Hollow Knight, Cuphead, Ori in the Blind Forest, Doom and Death's Door. This list is only a handful of games, many of which are successful ports or big indie titles. But for even smaller developers, this could be cause for concern. All right, so here's the official Unity post. All right, so here's the chart. Revenue threshold, $200,000. Install threshold, 200,000. So if you told 200,000 copies of a game, you're getting charged. And remember, it's retroactive. It's not proactive, it's retroactive. 
So new installs per month, one to 100,000, 20 cents per install. The Unity Enterprise price, 12 cents, 12 and a half cents per install, which rounds up to 13 cents. If you ever see anything over anything in that third digit, it's it's getting rounded up for in terms of billing and everything like that. All right, so here's where it's gonna get uh, really vague, really quick, and you can see why everybody's planning to get screwed by Unity. Here's their FAQ. What is Unity Run Fee? We are introducing a Unity Run Fee that applies to certain Unity subscription plans based on per game installs across any Unity game platform. Creators only pay once per download, but that's not what it says. So it sounds like they're paying per download and install. What does Unity Runtime Fee apply to? The Unity Runtime Fee will apply to games that have made $200,000 in the last year and have at least 200,000 games per, per game lifetime install. All right, so here we go. Each time a game is downloaded, Unity's runtime code is also installed. The Unity runtime fee goes towards the continued investment in that code to support the billions of devices served every month. Right, so you're paying for the, the actual download of the game. Minimum threshold for eligibility, the Unity runtime fee will be calculated based on the applicable rate, depending on the number of installs, the country of installs, and the, uni and the user's Unity plan multiplied by the number of eligible installs, right? So remember when I said they're charging you for download and then actually installing the game? See, they're, they're wording it just carefully enough that you think it's a one-time fee and you're just gonna get hit with a ton of charges. Do I still need to pay for my Unity subscription plan? Yes, the Unity subscription plan is separate from the Unity runtime fee. So there's another charge. How is Unity collecting the number of installs? We leverage we leverage our own proprietary data model and will provide estimates of the number of times the runtime is distributed for a given project. This estimate will cover an invoice for all platforms, which means these things are always gonna have to be online. You're never gonna be able to play these offline because it constantly has to talk to the Unity servers and tell you, hey, hey, you gotta charge this person. All right, so remember over here, they talked about downloads. How is an install defined? An install is defined as the installation and initialization of a project on an end user's device. That's not a download, that's an actual install, right? So you hop on Steam, you hop on whatever, Xbox Live, PlayStation Store, you buy a game, you download it, the creators get hit with the download. Now the game has to install now that it's downloaded. Well, as soon as you start installing it, they get hit with another fee. So they are literally triple charging people to make games to essentially put money in Unity's pocket. And that we're not even getting into the gritty details. So a lot of games now have DLC. A lot of games have modding. A lot of games will die for a little while. DLC will come up or some new mod will get popular. They'll, people will reinstall the game. That's another charge for people. You can literally be charged for a game that you made six, nine, infinite number of times because of how they set this up to make money. Like this is going to kill the Unity game engine. There's Why would you use Unity game engine if you know you're gonna be charged at least three times on a single game for a single sale? Like I'm gonna use some examples here, so just, just bear with me. Uh, popular games, Fallout 4, Skyrim, RimWorld, all of them have a very large modding community. So let's say somebody picks up the game. All right, you just got charged for the download and install of that game. They play it for a while, they put it down, they uninstall it, they install a new game, they come back a couple months later when they hear there's DLC or somebody made a mod for it or they learn about mods, now they re-download the game. Now they install now you get charged again. They install their mods. They play it. Let's say it breaks the game. Let's say one of the mods breaks the game. They have to uninstall the game and reinstall it. Congratulations, you got hit with another charge. Let's say it has a corrupted install, which does occasionally happen. Congratulations, they uninstall the game. They reinstall the game. You get another charge. Oh, that DLC that came out on a game you haven't played in three or four months that you uninstalled? Congratulations, you just got charged again for putting out DLC. 
Someone's computer dies. They have to reinstall the game. There's another charge. The, Unity has literally set this up where they can just charge you every single time. Like, I'm surprised they honestly haven't just said anytime somebody boots up the game, we're going to charge you. Because that's kind of what they're leaning to. This is an absolute shit way to fucking run a game engine company. But guys, that, I'm going to leave it at that for this video. I'll let you guys ponder over this one, but make sure you share this video. I want to hear your thoughts in the comment section. Make sure you've dropped me a like. Make sure you're subscribed. And I'll catch you on the next one, but until then, be easy like sleazy.